Um, so I'm excited to hear this because I feel like I've been a little bit roadblocked lately in my inviting and like, I don't know. And hopefully Brooke, you can talk on this. Um, I almost think it was easier when we had like challenge packs, right? And you were like, buy, you know, a challenge pack with performance or a challenge pack with Shakeology. If you already have BOD, you buy completion packs. And now we have like 7,000 different options. So I'd love like when you go through your presentation and kind of give us your background, if you could talk a little bit about how you're inviting with so many options now, because I know we asked for all these options and now I'm feeling overwhelmed. I on it to answer your question. I honestly haven't changed that piece of my inviting. Okay. Like okay. I still, I'm still asking the same questions and I'm still mm -hmm. usually suggest the same exact total solution pack now, you know, same difference. Um, and then I might add on like some energize or something, but I stick with the basics. Okay. Okay. I don't get into okay. all of the options unless like it's come up in our conversation that like, you know, the products and like the go and glow or something would make the more sense. But I really, you know, in this business, a lot of stuff has adapted and you kind of evolve as times change and all that fun stuff. But as far as my inviting goes, I really still do it like 2018 style because it, okay. it works for me. You know, I know different things work for different coaches and other pieces of my business have evolved with the times, but like the old school, ask the questions, um, get the information, like really establish a rapport with my people still works. Okay. So cool. I take a, like, don't fix what's not broken type of approach. Awesome. But everybody's so, different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'd love to hear, like, I guess maybe I was doing things different. Anyway, I'll let you go through your spiel. So yeah, 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 yeah. I won't yeah. ask any more questions before you even No, start. no, no. Oh, I love it. I like when it's more of like a convo and I don't feel like I'm just like spitting all this information out. Yeah. Out. Yeah. I know. I just, and, and maybe I just need to go back to the old school, but like I was having this conversation with my husband tonight because, um, he was asking, he's like, well, what, what's the most popular program now? And I was like, well, I have to wonder if like with body, which I'm more of a program person than a body person, but I know people are more body people than program people. If we're going to have four launches a year anymore, like, are yeah. they going to have four new programs a year, every year with body? Cause are some of the people that did programs now going to body and spin? Cause that's their preference, right? And do they want to try to market body more, you know, like if, you know, more people are probably going to be more inclined to get body and keep body if yeah. they don't need the, all the, the frills from bod, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Interesting too. Can you make me the host? The yep, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. okay. Uh, can I make you the host? Yeah. yeah there's three dots. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. I should sure. know how to use zoom and pass. Oh, and now I have people in the waiting room. So I'll keep an eye on that. Um, okay. So I'm going to give the quick version of my little spiel here. And then, yeah, I love questions at the end and more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, okay. And I put my Canva like this so that I can still see myself and see you guys. Cause otherwise it makes, it's weird for me. So <laughs> go with the flow here. So, okay. So thanks for you guys for having me. My name is Brooke. Um, I have been a coach. April will be seven years. Um, which is just crazy to me. Time really does fly. Um, before I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Um, I know when I hear guest speakers, I like to kind of hear their story kind of, you know, get to know like where they came from, how they started. It's interesting. And then I really feel strongly that like we all kind of gravitate towards different people's stories. So maybe something I say kind of will resonate with you. Um, and then I also share my story because it's a big piece of this topic and kind of why I have the mentality around inviting that I do today. So backing up, I've been a coach for almost seven years. Before I started coaching, I was a kindergarten teacher. Um, I was one of those people who from a really young age knew that I was going to be a teacher. Um, I just loved working with little kids when I was younger, like in high school, college, I, you know, daycares, camp counselors, 
you know, when I was younger, younger, I'm the youngest, so I don't have any younger siblings. So I would go to like the gym with my mom and like hang out with the little kids in like the gym daycare. (laughs) And so I just knew that I wanted to be a teacher and working with little kids. It just made sense to be like a young grade school teacher. So I went to school for seven years for teaching. I truly thought I was going to be like a 65 year old lady who was like, I've been teaching for, you know, 40 years. And just like, I just, there was, I never ever had any reason to believe that that wouldn't be my plan A forever. I guess in hindsight, I guess I just always assumed because the other thing that I was so sure of was that I'd be a mom someday. And I think in hindsight, I just was naive and I kind of just assumed that it was just going to all kind of perfectly fall into place and there was going to be endless amount of time for all of the things that I wanted to do. <laughs> and so for the first couple of years, when I got my landed my first teaching job, um, I poured my heart and soul into my career because I could, my husband, who's my husband now was my boyfriend at the time we had our dog, we were renting. So we didn't have a mortgage. We didn't have responsibilities. And so I could be at school for 12 hours a day. And I could spend extra money on teaching supplies and all that, that, you know, extra stuff. I would literally be at school for like 12 hours, come home that people called me the bag lady. I would come home, eat whatever fast food my husband um, bought or whatever, probably not super healthy thing that he made. And I'd get right back on the couch and do more work to get ready for the next day. So that meant I was working out a lot less. I was sleeping a lot less, which meant I had no motivation to work out. Even if I did have time, I just fell into a rut. And it's ironic because right before I landed my teaching job, my husband and I had just done the original P90X and we followed it to a T. Like I measured every teaspoon of olive oil and that's the original, like they were 60 minute workouts and we got into the absolute best shape of our life. So it's funny that you fast forward three months, three years, and now here I am like not treating my body correctly. So it was all well and good for a couple of years until I think we got engaged around this time. And I started thinking about the future. I'm a planner anyway, but I think just kind of having, you know, the engagement under our belt, it really made me start thinking about like, well, wait a second, like this has been fine. My, my lifestyle has been fine up till now, but once we get married, I'm going to want to have kids. Like, how am I ever going to maintain this schedule and continue to be the teacher that I want to be while also being a mom one day? Because I knew I wanted to be a mom and I knew I was going to want to, you know, spend quality time with my kids, not just like an hour and a half before bed while you're rushing to give them dinner and a bath and get them off to bed. And so I started kind of like wondering how this is all going to work. And I vividly remember asking some of the other teachers because, you know, in early childhood education, a lot of us tend to be women and moms. And uh, many of them said, you kind of just half ass both of your jobs. you kind of become like a half-assed teacher, like an in and out teacher, and you kind of become like a half-assed mom. And that did not sit well with me. I was like, hell no. Like as much as I love teaching, I can only imagine the love that I'm going to have for my kids. And that's just not something that's going to fly with me. So I'm a big believer that the universe puts things in front of us at the right time. So leading up to this, my coach which I'm sure many of you can relate to, she had been inviting me lots of times, not necessarily always to coaching, but to the challenge group as well. Um, And I just continued to say no. But finally, when the time was right for me, like when I was in the right mental space to be open to other opportunities, that's when I finally said yes to her. And thankfully, you know, this is why we say be here in a year from now, be here in three years from now. Thankfully she was still around. Um, so what the time was right for me, she was still there and ready to help me. Um, I eventually said yes to her because she continued to share her story on social media. And I was able to see what I wanted my future to look like in her present, like what she was sharing about her there and now was what I wanted to have one day. Once I knew teaching was no longer my plan A, I knew I needed a different plan A because 
we cannot live off of my husband's income. So it wasn't a choice for me to just say, you know, I'm going to quit teaching and, you know, kind of see how things go. I needed to make something happen now, you know, before I was pregnant so that when I did have a baby one day in the future, I had options. I never wanted to be in a position. This is the control freak in me. Like I knew I never wanted to be in a position where I had to go back to work because we needed the finances or I had to go back to work because we needed, um, you know, health insurance working for the state. You get really good health insurance. I just wanted to be in control. If I decided that I wanted to go back to teaching, that's one thing, but I never wanted somebody else to dictate the way that I spent my days. And so I finally said yes to her because I could see her success. Um, she was happy. Clearly she was really healthy. She um, had two little boys and she was making an income and she was working from home. And it was just like, once teaching wasn't my plan A, that was that her life was like my dream all of a sudden. And so because she was still around, because she continued to share her story, I said, yes. And, um, you know, I really jumped in. I feel like I'm, we all, I think we all look for like those unicorn coaches. Um, I think I was one of her unicorn coaches. You know, I just kind of dove in. I, I did all of the things. I was a product of the product. She told me to do something. I did it um, because I didn't know any, any better. You know, all I knew was that she was successful. So if she told me to do something, I should probably do it. And so um, fast forward a little bit of time, we got married and then four months. No, 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 no. We got married. I don't know. Oh, so, so I don't know the timeline anymore, but soon after I started coaching, I got pregnant. <clears throat> and so here I am all of a sudden I went from like, okay, casually, I want to build this business. I really want to, you know, do this. So that when I had a baby one day to, oh my God, I now have nine months to make this happen. Like I don't have time to sit around and, you know, muster up the courage for five invites today because I didn't have time for that. Like I didn't have the opportunity to sit there and wonder. And I always give this <laughs> to sit there and wonder like what Susie from biology class in seventh grade is going to think of my invite. Like, I don't care what Susie thinks of my invite because my why is so big. My why now has emotion attached to it. Like my babies were everything before they were even born. And my why now has a timeline attached to it. That's huge. My, my back has always been against the wall in this business. And so that's really a huge piece of this, my passion behind inviting. I'm a firm believer that you will not have a business unless you're inviting. You're going to get lucky that once in a while, people are going to come to you. You know, now we have subscription renewals and all that fun stuff. But if you want to truly grow your business, and I am willing to bet that if you're on this call or you're taking the time to listen to this recording, you are probably a serious business builder and you really want to move your business forward. And so you have to invite. And so I'm going to go into, you know, the the logistics of inviting kind of how I invite the mindset piece behind inviting, um, and all of that fun stuff, but to just kind of finish my story, I, so here I was, it was my, it ended up being my last year teaching. I didn't know it at the time, but it was my sixth year teaching. And here I am pregnant, growing a human and coaching part-time. And, um, at the end of my pregnancy, I ended up taking a 16 month leave of absence um, you know, most teachers would take, he was born in April. Most teachers would take the rest of that school year, the summer, go back in September. I took that whole next school year off and I freaking hustled then too, because I knew the only thing that would have been worse for me personally, that, and this is like a, this is my personal feelings. The only thing for me that would have been worse going back after those, you know, four or five months would have been to be off for those 16 months, get a real taste of what this life would be like, like full-time mom, part-time coach, working in pockets of time, nap time hustles, all that fun stuff that I wanted and dreamed of now to have that. And then to have that taken away from me. So first time mom, super sleep deprived, had no idea what I was doing as a mom, still kind of learning the foundations of Beachbody, 
but I just made it happen. I, you know, I made, I had no excuses. I would just find pockets of time. I really had the support of my husband, which was helpful. Um, so that when those 16 months were over, I certainly hadn't replaced my income yet, but I could justify between, you know, what we pay in daycare and stuff that I didn't go back. So, um, and then the other thing that really plays a factor into my inviting here is I call myself a dead leg warrior, meaning I was placed on the inside, in a, the inside leg, my, my coach's inside dead leg. So a place where, um, there's no building happening. Now, when I refer to my coach, she's technically my adopted coach. She didn't put me in this dead leg. It's another person who put me there, but basically what that means is I get no volume help from anybody above me. So any of the volume that's accrued into my business is 100% the efforts of myself and the people, the efforts of the people that I put there. Um, so, you know, when I kind of, oh, sorry, I have people wanting to get in. Sorry. Um, when I, a couple months after I started coaching and I realized, you know, I started learning the ins and outs of the back office and I realized that I was put on the inside dead leg. I was really salty about it at first, but obviously, you know, I'm still here. I, I realized I had two choices. I could literally quit for six months and start over, but with being pregnant, I didn't have six months to wait. Like I needed to hustle or I decided to, you know, shut up about it and not feel sorry for myself. And despite it probably being harder and taking a little bit more time, I knew that I could make it happen. So, um, Lowe's just all those two things kind of really have solidified my passion for, you know, getting over the fear of inviting and just freaking doing it. Because if your why is big enough and strong enough and you have that emotion attached to it, you're going to be willing to do whatever the heck it takes in order to move your business forward. So um, I really feel and you feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions if you want or jot them down for the end. Um, I really feel like inviting is a mindset and a mechanics thing. Like you really, you know, my whole story here is basically like the mindset piece of it. You have to get into the mindset that we have this gift to offer. Other people would feel, you know, would be lucky to join us. We have the opportunity to, opportunity to change other people's lives, that other people's opinions don't pay your bills all that fun stuff. And so, um, I really feel strongly that you have to be in that mindset. Otherwise you're going to struggle. You're really going to struggle with sending these invites and, you know, you don't want to sit there and spend your whole power hour, you know, mustering up the courage to send a handful of invites. Your invites should really be something that you can send quickly. I'll show you some, um, examples, but invites are something that I copy and paste and then when they write back, that's when, for me, that's when it gets more personal and we have like a real conversation. Um, so I like to think of inviting as kind of, I think of it as like a building and the mindset piece is the foundation. So getting your mind right in general, but especially in the moment, like when you sit down to do your power hour, you want to get your mentality in a place of like, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to change some lives. I'm going to reach out to people. You want to give people the opportunity to say no. If your people are, if you're hearing some no's, you know, go for no. If you're hearing some no's, it means you're just that much closer to your yes. You just really want to get in that mindset. And so that's really the foundation of our building here. So if you truly want to help people, you have to get comfortable with getting uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's just part of this business is us putting ourselves out there, um, to really find the people who need our help. Most people are not going to say yes. The first time they're invited, look at my story. I told you, I literally said no to my coach for about two years. And I feel like majority of beach body coaches that I talk to, that's like their one regret is that they didn't start sooner. I think a lot of people, um, that happened to them as well. But it's your job, just like my coach did for me, it's your job to continue to invite people and time, until the time is right for them. Like, as far as I'm a big believer that like, as far as we're concerned, the timing is always right, like right now. Like we have job one, body, we have the mix spikes, we have all of these awesome programs that are coming out in 2022. 
like jump in now, like this is the time, why wouldn't you jump in? But if you're not in the Beachbody world, you might not see the value in all of it. And you might not understand why, you know, now is the time. So it's our job to continue to be around so that when the timing is right for them, you are here and ready to help them. Um, people are counting on us to change their life. Like I said, it's going to be very rare that people are going to reach out to you. <clears throat> people might want to reach out to you, but they're probably nervous, shy, scared. And so it's our job to reach out to them. <clears throat> Think of it this way. By choosing not to invite somebody, <clears throat> you're robbing them of the opportunity to change their life. Think about where you would be today if your coach had it invited you or where you would be today if your coach hadn't continued to invite you. Um, like I think about that for myself and I can imagine I'd either A, not be coaching at all. Maybe I'd still be teaching and for myself, I would be miserable. Or maybe I would have wound up on a different team and then I wouldn't know the girls that I know. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way, like your teammates, some of them are your best friends. Like I can't imagine my path not having crossed with some of them. So it's just really kind of crazy to think about how, you know, by us getting out of our comfort zone and sending that invite truly has the power to change somebody's life every single day. So that's really the foundation. That's the, the mindset piece is like, laying the foundation for that, for our biz, for the, that building. So we have the, the foundation is the mindset piece. And then the next story up, like the level one, like if you're going in the elevator, going up to level one are your stories. <clears throat> now in a perfect world, you would be doing all of these things every day, but that just doesn't happen. I don't think that's realistic. I certainly don't do all these things every day, but um, in general, these are the things that you want to be sharing. Um, and I'm sure, you know, there's probably things that I'm missing, but um, in gen this is a general overview of things that you want to be sharing that are going to allow you to connect with your followers. Um, so you want to share your workout clips. I like to share my workout clips, but not just my workout clips to be like, hey, look at me, look at my workout today. But I will take the opportunity, those 15 second clips to share something that's going to add value to my followers whether it's a small piece of my story, <clears throat> it's an objection, like I'm, I'm combating an objection. Um, it's some sort of motivation or inspiration for them that day. Um, so kind of take it to that next level. Um, we wanna share the products without the labels. It's going back to the um, curiosity marketing. And really, for lack of a better word, it's going to be easier, not necessarily to even sell like in selling and buying, but to sell them on the idea that these products are helpful and they're important and they should at least try them if you are showing your people that you're using them, right? So like every day I'm showing my, my Energize is my favorite product by far. So every single day before I work out, I'm showing my Energize. Um, to kind of pique their interest, right? And then I'm showing it, showing it, showing it. And then like yesterday I shared like what it is and what's in it. And I offered to send people a free sample. So let's like giving them um, some information so that when you're talking to them about a total solution pack, you can refer to that. Like, so now I, I you know, I was telling Julian, I usually will just do like the regular Shakeology challenge pack, but then I always throw in um, Energize at the end if we haven't talked um, if they haven't mentioned that that's something they would need. And I can, I can, I can do that because I refer to my story. So I'm like, oh, okay, here's the link. I also, you'll see, I also added a tub of my absolute favorite product. It's the one you see me drinking every single day before I press play. It's like seriously a game changer, you know, but you can always remove it if you don't want it or whatever, but it's just easier to sell them on the idea of trying things. If you're showing that you're using them, because if you're using them and seeing success, then they're going to want to use them too. Um, every day you want to be adding value, um, through your stories. That's going to, um, resonate with the person who is, you know, watching your stories. And if you are consistently adding to your niche niche, um, just by you naturally talking about like your everyday life is going to um, like, you're gonna relate to those people. Like, so for example, I pretty much only add moms. And so just throughout the day, I'm just 
it just comes natural to share mom stuff. I, I don't even think I told you guys this. I have a, um, he'll be six in April. And then, um, I have a two-year-old. So I have like a five and a half and a two-year-old. And so I'm, you know, like we're starting potty training tomorrow. So I'm talking about that. Like, it's just part of my everyday life and it's, it, it, it relates to other people. Um, and then my oldest is in kindergarten. So we kind of talk, I talk about stuff like that and his activities and things. Um, talk to the camera. I know it can seem kind of silly and weird and at first, but I like to think of it this way. I'm a big like reality TV show person. So, um, think of it. Like, I think of, I don't watch the Kardashians, but I think of, I think this is just what I think of because, you know, they're famous or whatever. Think about like their Kardashians or any sort of like TLC or MTV show or something. You, we feel like we know these people from watching these reality shows because you get to hear their voice. Like if they have any sort of accent, you get to like, you see them like with and without makeup, you see them in their pajamas, you see them with their friends and their family kind of, you know what I mean? You don't just see them when they're all kind of done up and, you know, fancy this and fancy that. It's like, you get to know the real them. You kind of feel like you're friends with them, <laughs> like these people on these shows. And so it's the same thing with your followers. There's just something to be said for what people can get out of video and you talking to video versus a boomerang or a static picture you know it's just completely different and it's really just allowing them to feel like they get to they can get to know you a little bit better and when they get to know you they're going to see that they can relate to you in different ways and when they can see that they can relate to you they're going to start to really you know like you and want to follow you more and that's when you're going to kind of hook them in and they're going to want to join you um and then Talk about what we do as coaches. I think so many people don't do this enough. I am one of them. Um, we are so quick to talk about fitness and nutrition and show our workout clips, but we don't talk about coaching enough, you know, whether it's like battling objections, um, showing like a behind the scenes, what you're getting done during your power hour, anything, because really, if you think about it, the big goal here is to build our team. Right. And so it's going to be easier to invite people to join your coach sneak peek or whatnot if you're sharing more about coaching. But if you're not sharing about coaching, maybe people don't even know that they there's an opportunity there for them to join you. So foundation is mindset. Level one is our stories. Level two is your posts or videos or reels are, you know, we know that reels are the big thing. The other the last so posts slash videos slash reels slash carousels. Carousels are when you, you know, add more than one picture and people can swipe right to go through them. Um, all of those things are um, make Instagram algorithm happy and they're likely to show your content to more people if you're doing the things that they want you to do. So, um, you know, you want to think of who you're attracted to. And like I told Jillian, a lot of, some of this stuff, I, I still go back to like, sure. I've evolved to doing a lot of reels and, and carousels and stuff, but when it comes to some things, I'm still like old school. And I still really like the whole idea of like sharing your brand and all of the things that make you, you, um, you know, so for myself, I share that I used to be a teacher slash, you know, that kind of relates to my coaching story. Um, I share that I suffer from anxiety. I share that I am a mom of two boys, um, you know, just different things about me, obviously health and fitness and coaching, you know, go into that as well, but you want to think of who you would be attracted to. Like, would you want to follow you, um, are showing all of the things that make you, you, or are you showing like, are you vomiting beach body? You know, if I were to come across an account, that's like, I think of the Monet, that the hair products, if there's somebody that's just like vomiting Monet stuff and, you know, she's just always showing like her perfect hair. Like, I can't really relate to that. I'm a mom. I don't have time to do my hair every day, but if she's, you know, showing that she's a hot mess mom too, and she's busy and, you know, she's doing all these things. And then she kind of sprinkles in these hair products that make life easier and make your hair dry faster and whatever, that's going to pique my interest. Right. Um, so think about kind of what you would be attracted to and that's what you want to put out there. And because what you post about is what you attract. So mindset stories, posts, slash reels, dash videos. And then this 
this like build up gets us to our private message. This is the invite. This is what we're working for. If you think about it, inviting doesn't have to be, and two things, inviting doesn't have to be scary because I feel strongly that if you're putting in the work a little bit every day by, you know, um, diving into your personal development to build that mindset, sharing your stories, sharing on your page, you're doing the things so that the natural next step is just to invite, right? It shouldn't be like scary um, because it just kind of makes sense. That's why we say being a product of the product, because it's going to be really hard to invite somebody to your challenge group if you're not also working out. It's going to be hard and uncomfortable and kind of scary to invite somebody to your challenge group if you have never posted about your challenge group. If you're not sharing your workout clips and your stories, it's probably going to feel awkward and weird for you to invite to your challenge group, right? Because you're probably thinking the person on the other end of your phone, you know, like if I were to get a an invite, I would, I usually would likely probably go to that person's page and like check out what they're kind of all about. And so if you dropped into my inbox and invited me to your challenge group, then I go to your page and there is nothing about health and fitness, you know, within the last week or two, that seems kind of weird, but as the sender, as the inviter, you know, like if it's just a natural, if it's an everyday part of my life, I work out most days, I try to eat my best and I sh naturally just share about my journey. And then you're what you're taking the time to watch my stories. You better believe you're getting an invite, right? It just makes sense. You have, you're starting to get ready for your February group. You have people who are in your inbox. You're sprinkling in your own fitness and nutrition. You're sprinkling in your challenge group coming up. It just makes sense. But I will say with that, I think the confidence with inviting gets stronger, the more you use it. So the more you do it, the more comfortable it gets. Um, so do whatever it's going to take to get it done. Make it a game, make it fun, listen to music, set a timer, set a goal number, um, have, you know, a friendly competition with your, um, accountability partner. Like you're not going to go to bed unless you send X amount of invites. You're going to, listen to 30 minutes of music and, you know, just bust out as many invites as you can and drink some energize before you send some invites that really hypes me up. Um, literally just whatever it takes, because that's going to help you focus on the music, the timer, the game, whatever, and not on the fact of, again, what Susie Sally from seventh grade biology class is thinking about your invite. Because if you only have 30 minutes to send an invite, you don't have you know, 10 minutes to sit there and muster up the courage to send like one invite. <laughs> you just got to get it done. Um, these are some invite examples. I had asked these when I made this presentation to my team. Um, so they're a little different. Mine tends, personally, mine tends to be something like the one in the middle. Um, I always write, hey girl, just in case I forget, but I 99.99 times out of 10 um, change it to their name as long as it says their name in their profile. Um, not only does it personalize it a little bit, it takes 30 seconds to do so, but also it helps you to not get flagged for spamming people. You know, just changing the script that much is going to help so that you don't get, you don't get flagged. So just, I truly believe your invite should just be sound like you're talking to somebody in real life. Like, Hey, Sarah, you know, just, I want to thank you so much for following my journey. It means so much. Do you have any interest in joining my February bootcamp? Like cool, calm, collected, doesn't have to be, you don't have to like vomit all this information. Think about like, if you were um, inviting somebody to a real life party, you're not going to like vomit, like the date, the time, the location, where to park, what to bring, what to wear, you know, like, you're just going to say like, Hey, I'm having a party on Saturday night. Would you want to come? That's it. And then when they say yes, that's when you get into the details, right? Um, again, I, I've been a coach for almost seven years. I still do this the way I think I've always done this because it works for me. I have tried the whole, like, once they send, say yes, send a PDF of all the options, 
or here's a Google form, fill it out. And then I'll send you a link. That doesn't work for me. Every time I've done that, I get ghosted. Like I invite them, they say, yes, I send them this form. And then I never hear from them again. My people like talking to me and I like talking to them. Yes. It takes a little bit more time, but I truly feel like it helps me really seal the deal with them because it's sending the message to them by taking the time to talk to them about their goals and their habits. It's sending the message to them that I truly am invested in their well being and their success. I'm not looking to just take their money and run. And it also helps me get to know them better because just because I started with the 21 day fix doesn't mean that everybody I come across, you know, is going to start with a 21 day fix for all I know. They've been working out every single day, but all of a sudden they don't want to go to the gym anymore because of COVID. And so they're going to be ready to go right into like 80 day obsession or something. You know what I mean? So I really feel like it's not like a cookie cutter thing. You really have to get to know each person on a personal level. Um, so like I could write this blindfolded, like great. There's actually a bunch of different options. Would it be okay if I asked you a few questions so I can get a better idea of how I can help you best? No one ever, ever, ever says no. They're like, sure. Um, so this does take a little bit of time. I don't let it take too much time, but it's definitely a back and forth. I ask one question at a time. Um, I relate to their answers. I don't want them to feel like they're on a deserted Island by themselves. Um, with what they're saying back to me, even if I have to stretch the truth and say, I've had a challenger in the past or a girl on my team, who's been in that same situation, just so that they feel like, you know, they're not totally they're not like strange or odd for whatever it is that they said. Can you tell me about your current fitness and nutrition habits? What, if anything, do you struggle with? Have you ever tried following a scripted fitness and nutrition program before? This is when, like some people, if you're not, again, if you're not in the beach body world, some people don't know that 21 day fixes beach body, or some people don't know that you're, you're a beach body coach. So they'll be like, oh yeah, I've tried this like 21 day one before. So then that gives you a little bit of information about what they've done in the past. If they already have a coach, you know, things like that. Do you think you could squeeze in a 30 minute workout most days? Sometimes I'll write the from home, depending on how our conversation is going. Sometimes I won't. Um, what would you say are your short-term and long-term health goals? Sometimes I'll ask them about energy. Um, cause then that, you know, gets the energize, um, name out there. Sometimes I don't, depending on how our conversation goes, like I said, make them feel validated. I always use feel felt found. I felt the same way. Um, that sort of thing. Or like I said, I sometimes will pretend I've had you know, experiences with other people who are in that same situation. Um, sounds cheesy, but what, what are we really selling? We're selling the relationship. Like people are buying you. Anybody can go to www.teambeachbody.com right now and buy the 21 day, 20, the job one total solution pack. But what they can't get that from, from that is you, you know, so yeah, they're getting the programs and the nutrition and all that fun stuff, but you know, you are a big asset to what they're getting. Um, if you're really committed to, you know, helping them. So definitely keep that in mind that, you know, you really have something to offer, get intentional about why you're doing this. What are you, why are you excited to help this person? Um, you're, you're not selling to people. You're extending the invite of something that changed your life. Again, think of where you would be if your coach hadn't invited you, if you hadn't have said, yes, think about how much Beachbody has positively impacted your life, your family's life, and now you're just kind of paying that forward. Um, I also think I will say too with this, I think by kind of getting to know them a little bit, it's establishing that rapport. And at least like my, my more veteran coaches, they were, they all stemmed from like being a really good challenger. They were all in my free groups. So like taking the time to get to know these people, I feel like is setting the tone for a relationship that then they go on to hopefully become coaches as well. Um, if that makes sense. So if you don't ask the answer is always no, make sure you're having fun. Sometimes I get caught up in the businessy stuff that you forget that this, at the end of the day, this should be fun. Um, and what's the alternative for me? There was no alternative. As soon as I knew that teaching was no longer my plan a, like I literally had no other alternative because I knew I wanted to be home. 
So if you can, you know, really get down with your why, and, you know, I think as new coaches, it's common to say that you want to help people and that's all well and good. This wouldn't be a good business if you don't want to help people, but I feel strongly that your why needs to be deeper than that. Um, because there's going to be days you don't feel like it, you know, just like we tell our challengers with, with fitness and nutrition, there's going to be days you don't feel like it. There's going to be days you don't think you have time. You don't want to meal prep, same thing with coaching, but if you can have that strong, why you can have a timeline attached to it is huge. If you can have emotion attached to it. Um, I think that is, those are all good things that are going to motivate you to show up on the days that you don't want to, or you don't have time. So that's all I got. Do you guys have any yeah, questions? That was, I was going to say, I really like all the questions. I tend to like, instead of like word vomiting, which is what a lot of us try to do, right? Like yeah. asking them like where, where they're at and where they're coming from, I think is super important and something that I try to do as well. So I loved that. Um, and I just want to add, like, I feel like a lot of people, and this isn't bad. It's just like a lot of coaches have a similar story where they like, were moms and wanted to stay home with their children or, you know, needed an income they could do from home. And I know, um, you know, Whitney was able to, to retire, retire. What is going on with this crazy hair? I have those um, so bad. <laughs> what the hell is if, I, if I didn't have a headband in, I have those. So bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> I'm so sick of staring at myself on zoom. Anyway, um, Whitney was able to retire herself, but I know like for me, I work full time and I love my job. Um, and so I think that you just have to like find to your point, like find your story and know that like your, cause I tried for a while, like, well, I better want to quit my job. Cause that's what everyone else was doing. And exactly. Um, so your story can be like, you know, about making an extra, you know, hundred dollars a week, right. Yeah. As someone's like side hustle or helping X amount, it doesn't need to be to like create an income that's tens of thousands of dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though that'd be cool, but it's not, I just, I just want to like reiterate that everyone's story is totally different and unique and you shouldn't feel like you have to fit in a box. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really, that was really, it was, and it was really hard for me in the beginning because I felt like Brooke, like a lot of the messaging was like, well, you're not successful unless you quit your job. And I was like, dang it, I'm successful and I don't yeah. want to quit my job. Yeah, right. That right. was really big though. Like in 2015, 2016, I know. Yeah. Like that was the jam. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was trying to leave and like retire their husbands. And I remember feeling a lot of pressure that I put on myself because I saw these coaches retiring their husband. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> far from that. So I think, yeah. And it, now it's changed. I, there's a lot like it's, cool to be a part-time coach now. So I don't know. it goes, it ebbs and flows. You yeah. got to do what works for you too. And like your invites, um, my, you know, I, I like, I really like starting with the challengers and, and sort of helping them along and they might look a little different for coaching. If you're not trying to, you know, if you're resonating with more people, Brooke, that want to stay home and I'm resonating with more people that don't like, it's okay. The invites can look, everything can look totally different. And, and there's so many people watching, waiting for you to reach out. And I always forget that I didn't do a great job yeah. inviting at the end of last year, you guys. And I just put up an invite for the ultimate reset. And it was not like a really well-received post. I'd say like, I don't know, maybe less than 20 likes on it. Um, but I reached out to everyone that liked it. And I, I created a voice message that I ended up just forwarding to people to like have more conversations and I've had two people join, like buy the ultimate reset and one woman buy a Shakeology sampler because she's going on vacation in two weeks. And I was like, no, you cannot, like, there's a lot of programs you can do on vacation. Yeah. The ultimate reset is not one, not of, them. one of them. And she's no. like, I really want to get started though. I'm like, cool. Why don't you buy a sampler? And as soon as you get back from vacation, you're ready to run you can yeah. do it. Right. But so like, but none of those people reached out to me zero. Right. Yeah. 
So I, and, and it wasn't like, I wasn't like emailing them. I saw you like my my recent post. Here's my link. Please purchase it and join me. Right. Right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't like that. I swear you guys. Right. It was like, Hey, saw you like my post. Like I was learning more. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, scary. I, but I always forget, Brooke, I always forget that like, I need to, whenever I'm in a rut, I'm like, I should really, and they're so glad if you do it the right way, they're so glad mm-hmm. you reached out. Yep. People are embarrassed to say like, yeah. Hey, I need some help. Right. Yeah. Or right. Exactly. Whatever. And one woman lived around the corner for me. I send like a little goodie kit and I like went to look up her address to like mail the kit. And I was like, I will be hand delivering this because you live one mile from me. That was cool too. Made a new friend. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, no, I really, any other um, questions oh, or comments? I say, comment. I just was going to say the refresher on what to do with posts and, you know, the story and, you know, the kind of the first two levels there is definitely something I have fallen down on. And therefore I don't invite because without those, you're right. I mean, you can't start the conversation without posting. I just actually yesterday and today I had Facebook memories come up with, you know, huge coaching posts that I put up there when I was doing nine week control freak. And I think I'm just in a rut with my exercise. Therefore I'm in a rut with my posting about it and everything. So I've just got to kick it into gear and start posting. It's a domino effect, you know, like if you're not in that fitness mindset or even just nutrition if you you know then you're not going to be like compelled to post about it and want to talk about it yeah pick a program product of the product (laughs) and then i'm doing a program i don't like i don't love it that's my thing i need to i need to start with something new so that i find something i love i'm a believer if it's not working for you there's no you don't need to finish it just to say that you finished it what are you doing for we what wait what is it Uh, no i started I started doing lift four and I actually didn't like that. It was four days a week was one of the biggest things. And it's just a little repetitive. So then I did the diet, um, diet bet with Joel to try it that way. And I liked it a little better because he had a fat blaster calendar, which is lift four and body workouts. So it's at least it's six days a week, which I like, but I'm done with that this week. And I'm just going to find a new program to do because I don't know. It's just not calling to me. Yeah. Start fresh. Do something you should be excited about it. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. You should have asked him about it when you were hanging out with him and 50 of his closest friends here in Boston. Exactly. I should have said, Hey, I'm not really loving your program. What do you recommend? (laughs) Were you sore after his workout? Actually, when he was here, uh, I want to in 2019, he was here for something. Maybe it was Lafour. And I remember being so, oh no, it was 10 rounds. I was so freaking sore after he did a live workout with us. I was like, what in the world? Um, yeah, no, I wasn't. I, it was a good workout. Believe me, he pushed, he did, you know, a body burn crush workout basically. And he threw the hardest moves that I've seen him do in any of them all together. Mm-hmm. So it was a mm-hmm. tough workout, but I don't remember being particularly sore. Okay. Oh just saying but, no I mean I like him I love 10 rounds just lift four wasn't for me so yeah I just need to pick a new one yeah yeah any other um, questions I, um, I guess I think just for me it's just like getting into the inviting because like I can work out product and product I can do my personal development I can drink my shake I can do all that I just don't invite people and like now I'm pregnant so now it's like I'm tired I'm like I'm just like I'm like the motivation is there to in the desire to um like still want to be a good coach and I have these ebbs and flows where I'm like I'm gonna do stuff and then I don't do it like something always happens and I just don't get into that consistent rhythm of like power hour and doing all the things and so it's just like I think it's just like you said like if I have if I give myself a half hour like I can't mull over the um yeah. over the invites I just have to do it so I think I just really have to be like intentional with making a list of people to reach out to so it's not like hmm who should I do and just kind of go through it because a lot of people are commenting on my post and are like oh my gosh I can't believe you're pregnant and still moving like I wasn't working out at all so it's like I know people are watching <laughs> so <laughs> You know, I think that 
I like I have an opportunity um because it's like I like my job I'm like Jillian I'm I'm not gonna quit my job when I work for the state and I need my pension <laughs> so at some point so I'm gonna be keep working but I also have to think about paying for daycare in the next you know six months so it's really yeah. like thinking like I just would like the extra income like I obviously want to help people but like the extra if I can get to five hundred dollars a month or more um I would like to like would I love to do this full time eventually sure but like that's not where my grind is right now yeah um so it's really like can I get to a point where I am adding I just want like I would like challengers it's not so much building a huge team it's just having the challengers um because I want to help people with that progress Mm -hmm. I think is really more my focus because I think I've been a coach oh my gosh, it will be seven years this year. Um, You know, and the focus back in the day was like, build your team, build your team, get all these people. And then like I was diamond once and then that fell apart and I haven't been diamond since. Um, So. Yeah, I would say set business hours. And then I would say to, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, if I were you, I wouldn't take the time to make a list of people to invite. I would just use the list of, you know, people who are, liking your posts, commenting on your posts, watching your stories, like those are my lists, you know? So when I sit down to invite, I'm opening up, especially with Facebook, the list of people who watched your stories never goes away. Um, So again, if you're, you know, you're doing those things consistently, you're sharing consistently, posting, you have, you're going to always have those lists to go to, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? No, that makes sense. I think, and I'm losing. So I realized when like I can post really good in the morning, like I start my day, like do my workout. And then like, I don't post all day because I'm literally like working. (laughs) Like I feel like I I have like just no time. Like I might be able to pop in and like put like something in, but it's like literally like I stop at like seven o'clock in the morning and then I might not get back to it till like six. (laughs) I'm home all day and I upload my stories once a day. Okay. I only upload my stories. I haven't done them for today. I'll do them after this call. You'll see. So all my stories are like probably 22 hours old now. I take pictures and videos throughout the day and then I upload them. Okay. Like I just feel like in in an ideal world, I would do it a few times a day. It just doesn't happen. And I've stopped trying to make it happen. But also too, like if you're trying to just like throw it up there, is it really going to be you know, are you going to really be adding the value that you want? Are you going to be asking you using the poll feature? And, you know, like I find that if I do it just once a day, I'm like able to sit down and, um, put more kind of thought behind it too, to make them more like intentional versus just doing it just to do it. So I'm just saying like, don't feel bad for like, you know, run your business. However, it works for you. Don't feel like you have to you know, constantly be updating your stories. If you only get to it twice a day, you know, maybe you could do a couple before you start work and then you do the rest before you go to bed. Okay. That makes me feel better. Cause I just yeah. feel like people it's like post consistently, but I'm like, I literally, I just like, I can't keep up with it sometimes. And it's just like, if I just do once or twice a day, like, yeah, I think know, a lot it's, of it's more realistic that. about my life. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are the same. And I mean, people aren't going to be watching my story tomorrow morning and be like, oh, that's not today's workout. Like people don't care. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? They just want to see that I'm still on this journey. I'm still trucking along. I mean, I intentionally don't post during the day. I peek at Facebook during the day, but I don't want my day job to know I'm looking at Facebook during the day. Yeah. So honestly, I don't want anything time stamped during the daytime hours. Uh, yeah. That's I don't exactly post during the day that. either. <laughs> I'll do stories. Um, but like store, I, I mean, I don't, you won't very rare, maybe at like a lunchtime occasionally, but I only yeah. post like once a day anyway. Um, you know, so I, I wouldn't, I love that Brooke, you said you only upload once a day. I try to upload like two to three times a day. And sometimes I feel guilty about that little. So once makes me feel better. I literally, I do it before bed every night. That's it. Yeah. That <laughs> makes me feel so much better. Cause I'm like, yeah, like, like how I carry, like, I like, I'm trying not to have like time stamp thing. Like most people from work are either blocked or don't know my, you know, don't follow me at all. So it's just like, but I don't want like, 
oh, that was at two o'clock this afternoon. Hmm. Why wasn't aren't she you working? <laughs> wasn't she on a Zoom call with me at that moment? Because <laughs> like I, I follow someone who I know is working and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, you know, like I just, um, so yeah, that, that like feels like there's so much pressure, but I think it maybe it's just like, you know, I follow other coaches and obviously their lifestyles are different. So I think that just like puts in your mind, like, oh my gosh, they're posting all day long. What should I do? And I'm like, they did retire themselves and their husbands. (laughs) Who are all in grade school and I'll be doing this full time. And sure. I'll probably get to my stories at different times of the day, but in this season right now, I'm doing all I can just to like, keep up with my life, (laughs) my business, my kids. I have a lot of, you know, personal things going on. So it's just, it is what it is. Don't feel bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Any other questions? Are we good? This is good. I think we're good. This was awesome. It was a really good discussion. Thank you. I need that refresh in my life. (laughs) I need to go post. Um, Yeah. Cool. yeah my, Thank I, you again, Brooke. Ready. I know we delayed this. It was like June, and then I don't know. This was like four times. And One I'm so her. glad you messaged me last night because it was like totally. Yeah, that's okay. No worries. Oh, so I'm glad you came. Later. <laughs> Have a great night. Everyone. All right. Thanks, we'll guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.